This is ContactTalkRadio.com. Consciousness in action. And you are taking action into your consciousness by tuning into Contact Talk Radio. And on TuneIn.com, Hing.fm, and Upsnap Mobile. Contact Talk Radio. All right. Welcome, everybody, to the Healthy Self podcast and webinar. This is your host, Cade Archibald, and... Really excited to be here with everybody today. Along with me, we got the original gangster himself, founder of Anodyne Pain and Wellness, uh, founding member of Anodyne Pain and Wellness, and uh, Go Wellness, and this Healthy Self podcast, Reagan Archibald. Yeah. And he's actually a really good provider, practitioner, and acupuncturist as well. So got, got a lot of stuff going on for this guy. Reagan, how's it going? It's going really well. Yeah, really well. Yep. April 1st today. So it's a brand new month, brand new quarter. Really excited. Yeah. Time, time to play some jokes on yeah. some folks. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So um, for all the listeners out there, Reagan is the best at um, <laughs> playing pranks on, especially mom. Mostly mom, um, but yeah. also also our sisters as well. Yeah, I, I just myself too. But I I was kind of too young to really get what was going on. <laughs> um, but when you'd wake Amber up at like six a.m. or five a.m. and tell her the phone, hey Amber, the phone's for you. <laughs> yeah, or one a.m. You know, yeah. anytime. <laughs> just, just whenever you were awake and felt like making someone's life a little bit a little bit miserable. <laughs> <laughs> yep april fools so how many of you have ever done an april fools joke on somebody maybe you could maybe you could share <laughs> <laughs> yeah maybe um i a good one would like uh, uh um so some like nasty food that looks really good um, there you go like those uh, jelly that beans could... that um are like uh throw up like vomit jelly yes. beans or like dog food flavored jelly beans. Oh. Uh, my kids love those. <laughs> They're like, oh, that's so nasty. Okay, eat this one. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, um, so those of you, oh, nice. Got my 13 year old uh, up today at 3 a.m. for school. That is brilliant. Nice <laughs> work, Cameron. That's awesome. Uh, <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, I so uh um Reagan's son uh Dom is staying at my house this week in St. George and then he's got a flight to go back up to Salt Lake tonight. And uh I I woke him up early this morning and told him that uh his flight got moved and it was intent like we had to leave otherwise he's going to miss his flight um like right then and so he jumps up and starts packing all his stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did. I let it go on for about like five minutes, and I was like, I can't let it go any further. <laughs> Dom, do you know what day it is? He's like uh, Thursday. It's like, yeah, it's uh, it's April first. He's like, okay, and I was like, yeah, so it's April Fool's Day. <laughs> He's like, oh, you. <laughs> that That's was great. It's good times. Well, um, so. What are we going to dive into today? We had an amazing health accelerator uh, course last night. Um, so for those of you that are not enrolled in that, make sure you uh, hop on that. So uh, go to AccuEastWest.com forward slash hack, H-A-C, um, and just post it in the chat box as well. But make sure you uh, tune into that. That is, um, and we got different challenges going on and everything and yeah, so um, man, my I got to look at my notes. What was the challenges last night? So we are well. What we're going to do is a debrief of the whole program, and and so this is for those of you in the chat or in the group. Um, the beautiful thing about this podcast today is you can go back and just listen to it, so you'll have the audio version, and then we're going to go and um, and and remind you of all the the hacks. But just so you remember, last night, Kate is Spartan race. We, you saw oh yeah, it was a that's, challenge. That's kind of a big one, to be honest. I, don't oh, I got know it right here. Not, Spartan but... race in June. <laughs> yes. I got it written right in my notes. Yeah, so it's something that makes you nervous. Um, so it's something you've never done before. 
uh, that you're excited about. Maybe that's a long hike. Maybe it's jumping into a yoga class, uh, trying Pilates. Uh, we talked about running a 5K or a marathon, depending on your fitness levels. And um, that's that's the challenge. And and the the whole purpose of the uh, the the Health Accelerator Challenge for March, it was the five weeks to optimal movement. And and so. Um, you know, and optimal fitness, optimal health and pain reducing uh, techniques. And so, so I thought it was incredible just to see the participation, um, you know, and, and so what we're going to do today is we're going to go through each of the challenges, because uh, there's five that we put out there, just to remind everybody, and then use this as a platform where you can come back and, um, you know, get up to date on your health accelerator. So does that sound okay, Kate? Or did you have some something else in mind? That sounds beautiful. Let's let's do this. All right. So challenge number one, um, what we called it was uh, ending pain and critical hormones that your joints can't function without. So so if you guys think of what pain does to your energy levels in your life, it zaps things. Um, you know, one of the worst things about having pain is you can't participate in activities. A lot of my patients... Yeah, I was meeting with a, a, an amazing lady yesterday, and she said, I just want to ski, but not not even ski as much as I just want to be able to go and hang out with my grandkids and actually have uh, some action in my life instead of sitting and, and hoping the pain goes away on its own. And she's just, you know, she was just in tears because uh, she's a former nurse, and she was like really looking for answers and it, all she, all the answers that she'd received to date was, you know, a surgery, which helped for a minute, and then pain medications. And she said, I can't keep going on like this. And so um, that's where we gave her solutions. So in, in our very first challenge, you know, what, what our goal was is to help people feel empowered so that they realize there's actually some very impressive ways to get out of pain. And, and, you know, first thing you have to do is decide, you know, I love this quote and I shared this, um, by Jim Rohn, but it's the first source of inspiration is deciding. The second source of inspiration is planning. The biggest source of inspiration is beginning. And so for those of you on this that have any kind of uh, health challenges or any kind of uh, pain in your life, I can tell you the very first thing you want to do is just decide that you're going to, going to get this problem taken care of. Because, Cade, what do you see in, in uh, people's lives who don't actually take care of their pain? Yeah, um, it, it, it is a just a drainer. Um, drain it just sucks the energy out of life, um, the enjoyment. And, and yeah, it's, it's just a lot a lot more challenging to enjoy life when you're in pain constantly. And yeah, a lot of time, like when I'm in pain, people don't like to be around me cause I'm grumpy. Yeah. Um, not <laughs> saying I know that about anyone else, but, <laughs> but that's usually the case is, you know, if, if you're in a lot of pain, it's just really hard to, to get past that. And so, um, it's so critical to, you know, figure out what, what the cause of that is and come up with a solution. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's, um, you know, the biggest thing, wherever you are in your health journey, you know, just don't stop because life is uh, so rewarding and, and rich and abundant for us. But man, when you don't have your health, it all stops. And so one of the reasons that we do this podcast, we do this show, we have this amazing community is so that we can remind you guys that, you know, stay on track, you know, healing is a daily choice and healing is different than a cure. And I think, uh, I think it's a really important distinction. When you look at that healing is something that helps you transform where you are from your current state of health to where you want to go. My first book called your health transformation is all about that process. And so healing is where you're actually in this, um, you know, this transformation every single day. A cure is when you go back to the original state. And, uh, and so it's a beautiful thing, you know, if you, if you consider um, no matter how far gone you think your, your joints are or your body or you don't believe that you can increase your fitness levels or increase your overall health, well, you want to jump into these, these hacks because we shared some great insights 
that we're already seeing people uh, just in this 30 day process, this five week process, we're, we're seeing people that have been more active than they've been in their entire life. Um, and so I really appreciate those of you on the show today and those who will be listening in the future. I really appreciate your dedication to health because I believe that's the fastest way that, you know, as Gandhi said, it'd be the change that you wish to see. Um, but if we want to change the planet and have, uh, you know, healthier societies, more happiness, um, then the very first thing we got to do is, is make our health our number one priority. Um, otherwise, you know, it can unravel very quickly. And so um, some of the things we always do in our health accelerator challenges is we focus on just getting better 1% every day. And um, so we talk about behaviors, we talk about new habits, because all of us have 24 hours in a day. And what you do with those 24 hours is going to be really important. And so I don't know if you if you remember last night, Kate, we talked about those subtle changes, you know, that are when you start making lifestyle changes, you don't see immediate results. You know, maybe you start sleeping better, your energy gets a little better, but it's after a certain amount of time, then all of a sudden it's like these ex exponential returns come like compounded interest. Um, have you noticed that in your own life? Oh, absolutely. It's, it, it's funny if you uh, like think about how our minds usually work. It's like, Oh, I did a killer workout today. And you know, you're like, I'm looking in the mirror, like, <laughs> yeah, like, mm -hmm. hey, do I notice it? I, I don't think I do yet. Um, but we always want that instant gratification, but it is just those little teeny things over time. Um, cause that's really when I got on my, you know, our, my health journey, what, eight, eight plus years ago, it was really like slow and sluggish and just felt like, why am I doing this? Um, why am I eating this way? <laughs> and, um, and then, you know, over, you know, for about, it was like the four week mark is where I really started to be like, oh man, I, I actually feel better because I felt kind of crummy at the beginning. Um, I feel better. My energy's up. Like I started no actually noticing that I was uh, like trimming up. Um, yeah. So it, it, it just feels really good. And, and, but it is like little small things that actually like you can start seeing results. Yep. Um, Cause it's, absolutely. It's not like, um, I, I did this amazing workout this morning, which I had a really good F45. Did you? Um, nice. If anyone goes to F45, I, uh, I got over 50 points today. That's like, <laughs> that's a, that's a big one. Woo! So everyone out there is like, yeah, good job. Kid. Rushed it. Um, nice. it just felt really good. Um, but I can't just do that once and be like, all right, yeah, I'm, I'm good guys. Right. Continual process. And, and so one of the things, I mean, the, the, the great thing about that is if you think about how it impacts your energy levels for today, uh, you know, you can be a better, a better boss, a better business owner, a better father, um, you know, a better leader for our organization. I mean, all those things come into play. And at the end of the day, you're happier. And so the yeah. thing that gets in the way and in, in challenge number one that we we talked about is this chronic pain cycle that I know many of you are in. And that's one of the reasons you've reached out to us. But the very first thing in this chronic pain cycle, if you look at it from a, you know, more of a physiological perspective, you know, number one is you have anxiety that there's, there's a signal, there's a, because pain is a sensation, right? And that signal tells us that there's tissue damage and harm in our body. And then secondly, what happens is our brain becomes more focused on the problem. And so that's all we can think about. I mean, I've had injuries. I've got one right now. I got an MRI scheduled for today at two o'clock. And uh, I'm just like, you know, every movement, I'm like trying to make sure I don't disrupt that, you know, that shoulder because I'm like, there's some significant damage there. Um, and then what happens is then that that focus changes your nervous system behavior and then it increases the pain. So, you know, in, in uh, St. George, when I was there and Dan started working on my shoulder and like moving it around and releasing it, that was incredibly painful, but it, it relieved the anxiety in my brain because he was able to restore range of motion in my shoulder. So, so hopefully I'm, I'm sharing some things that'll be helpful for you guys in your journey too. And then that created less anxiety, more movement. And then, you know, uh, but, but without that change, 
the anxiety causes more pain. Anxiety causes more pain. And actually, in the study that we shared, they found that the prevalence of mood disorders among pain patients, so those of you who have loved ones or family members who are in pain, um, what they show is that 54% of people who have chronic pain cycles have mood disorders. So that's over half. And Cade, you mentioned you get grumpy. So my job is to never let you get in chronic pain because I really, you know, I, I spend more time with you than anyone else, which I really appreciate. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't ask to spend, um, okay, maybe my wife, but, um, <laughs> but, um, but, you know, I don't want you grumpy. So <laughs> I, well, I'm, I'm not fun to be around when I'm grumpy, right? <laughs> no, no, it's, it's hilarious when uh, even my boys would be like, oh, Cade was kind of grumpy when he's, Dom was like, Cade was kind of grumpy when he's driving the boat. I'm like, no, he wasn't. He was like managing all the, all you guys and all of us. <laughs> Just like one little subtle thing. And like, everyone's so sensitive. It's, it's kind of interesting. So, so yeah, so these chronic pain, one of the things that uh, you want to look at in your body. So how many of you have chronic pain right now that you'd love to, to never experience again? Then you can just, you know, raise it in the chat box um, be, because pain is a four letter word. Pain is that thing that we dismiss um, too frequently because uh, we've been told as kids, you know, don't cry, get up, be tough. And you got this and instead of like really honoring what our bodies are going through. And, and so this chronic pain cycle, it's really important to start looking deeper in your body as, as to what is actually going on. And, um, and so it looks like, you know, you know, we have several people who've, who've been through experiences of, of chronic pain, but, you know, some of the things we look at is, you know, you can have systemic muscle pain and that can be from inflammation. Maybe you have a thyroid issue. I, I know when my thyroid was not functioning, I, I hurt everywhere. Every day felt like I had the flu. Um, you can have infections that cause pain, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, fibromyalgia. These things are, are real joint issues, you know, okay, we treat a lot of joints in our clinics at Anodyne, uh, pain and wellness. And, um, you know, that these, these can cause, uh, you know, a lot of uh, disruption to your quality of life, you know, you can have arthritis in your back, you can have disc bulging. Uh, you know, what I hear every day is that the patient wish they would have started care with us 10 years ago, instead of wasting their time and their money and, you know, uh, some of them have ended up on disability because of the unrelenting pain. And then one of the most common sources of pain is back pain. And, um, and back pain can be caused from degenerative discs. It can be caused from trauma, poor sitting. I mean, Cade, you've dealt with, uh, you had dealt with chronic back pain and oh, yeah. you handled it pretty well. You still stayed happy, but um, were you happier once you got that pain corrected? Oh yeah. Well, and it wasn't, um, it wasn't like a constant all the time nag. It was just any activity I did. And so it just really limited. And I think that's, that's like the, one of the things with pain, um, even if it's not a constant, like I'm sitting here, I'm not in pain, but as soon as I start moving and doing something, it's painful. Like that, that zaps your, your life, like some of those activities that I love to do, I couldn't do, or I could only do a little bit and then I'd just be really grumpy. Yeah. <laughs> so I just, I just limited it enough so I didn't get too grumpy. Yeah. Which is no fun, right? Because no. um, it's a person who likes to go like 110%. Um, so, um, so one of the things that uh, we talked about is this new paradigm. You know, if you look at the cause of, of chronic pain, um, there's a study that was done, and what they found is that there was this bacterial transmigration into every osteoarthritic joint. So if you have arthritis in your joint, rheumatoid or osteoarthritis, you're going to have this, this um, foreign species of bacteria, this, uh, this staph infection, essentially, in your, in your joint. And this is very interesting because what the study is called is the cartilage gut microbiome axis, a new paradigm for novel therapeutic opportunities in osteoarthritis. But what they found is that bacteria is actually moving and can be found in the synovium of osteoarthritic patients. Not only is that bacteria, can it be pathogenic, 
Um, but what they also found is that these, um, these pathogenic bacteria that lived in the joints and did not belong there actually increased the inflammation and caused a further disruption of the bacterial health. And so uh, that's something that we've looked at is, is, man, with osteoarthritis, not only is there bacteria in the joint, but we've also found that in osteoarthritis, there is insulin resistance in the joint. If you, if you re read the book, uh, Why We Get Sick, um, by uh, Professor Bickman. He's out of BYU here in Provo. Um, it's a great book, but one of the things he shares are studies about how cartilage uh, degeneration occurs because of insulin resistance in the joint. So I think that's kind of interesting, Cade, for I more think it's of a so interesting. Well, and it, it also, um, like when we got involved in, in regenerative medicine and stem cell therapy, yeah, that's, that's our our primary um, treatment, like if you're dealing with, with low back or, or any back issues, anything like that, you got to look into regenerative medicine and, and stem cells or, or some sort of uh, regenerative medicine uh, product there. And we've seen such great results. Um, the ones, you know, we have a, a small non-responder rate, which is extremely low, about 5% five, 5 non-responder I look at most of those cases, they have blood sugar issues. Like they, we're not keeping it, they're, they're not able to keep their blood sugar um, at, a, at effective rates. And so the, I, I think it makes total complete sense. And it actually answers the question of why um, yeah. that is. And you got <clears throat> insulin resistance in that joint that, that causes a lot of problems. Yeah, it really does. So um, so yeah, then we said, well, how do we treat that? Just like you said, Cade, well, we use, uh, you know, these tissue allografts, um, to, uh, utilize, to regrow, uh, you know, the damage that's been done. We do stem cell recruitment, um, you know, in the umbilical cord and the amnion tissue, these MSCs are actually, um, they're antimicro, they release these antimicrobial peptides. Um, LL 37 is, is one of those. And that LL37 helps get rid of the bacterial infection. So for those of you who have had these, uh, you know, some of these, these stem cell recruitment therapies and stem cell therapy um, with these uh, tissue allografts, you know, one of the things that science shows is that there are these uh, antimicrobial properties. Um, there's also properties like the MMP9 that breaks down scar tissue and allows your joint to thrive again. So I can't wait to get my shoulder injected. I've just been waiting for my MRI. And then once I get that, um, you know, you're going to see a brand new shoulder. We've been doing BPC-157 and thymus and beta-4 injections in it. And that's improved the pain levels dramatically. It was 30% the first time that Sarah injected it. And then it's just gotten better and better and better. So I'm really excited. So I'll let you guys know how that's looking. Um, awesome. Yeah, so there, there are novel ways, uh, you know, there's different peptides uh, that, that we use, uh, like the BPC and the, the TB4. And then uh, with the tissue allografts, there's no reason why you need to live in chronic pain. And then we got acupuncture on top of that, which is phenomenal. Um, and now we're bringing in chiropractic care. We've got Dr. Dylan Knight, um, who's just a, a phenomenal chiropractor. We're going to have him on the show. Um, but yeah, he starts uh, next week. So um, for those of you in, in the northern regions in Alpine or Salt Lake, you're going to have access to uh, a, a just a, a really amazing chiropractor who's, who's been through our Go Wellness trainings um, and just uh, more talented than almost any other chiropractor I've worked with. So excited about it. Yeah, him. really, really sharp guy. I think um, all, all the patients up there are going to love him. Yes. So the challenge on, on week one, hopefully you guys, you know, you, you know, one of the things we did talk about is cortisol production, but you know, one of the challenges we talked about is um, just making sure that you are um, getting out, you're getting rid of pain, and then you're regulating your cortisol cycles because that, that causes uh, pain increase or decrease. And so get out in the morning and get out in the sun and go for a walk or exercise for about 20 minutes in the morning. Um, challenge number two, uh, week two, is the eight minutes of exercise minimum per day commitment. So, um, so this is where we talked about exercise benefits. 
And so if for those of you who have an exercise program, you know, one of the things you want to look at is um, why you'd want an exercise program in the first place to give you a little motivation. But one of the things that the researchers found that especially if you're a postmenopausal uh, female um, and males, so, uh, but, but this study was done particularly with females, they found that if they exercise for 30 minutes, two hours and 30 minutes of moderate aerobic exercise <clears throat> each week, they had lower incidences of breast cancer, lower incidences of heart disease, and lower incidences of um, diabetes and, and blood sugar. So, wow. so two two and a half hours of your life. I mean, I don't know how many hours there are in a week. I think what is there? There must be a hundred and twenty something hours in a week. Um, and but but if you just think, wow, what if I just spent two and a half hours of moderate exercise? Could you do that? And look at the big return you get on the other side of it, not only the long term, but uh, short term as well. And uh, they talked to, we, you know, the research talked about the importance of high impacts, uh, you know, exercises, you know, like dancing, aerobics, running, jogging, jumping rope, stair climbing, playing like pickleball. I know pickleball is huge uh, down there in St. George. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think there's whole communities, you know, how there is communities built around golf courses. Uh, aren't there like pickleball communities down there? Or is, <laughs> am I wrong? No. They, it's, uh, they just put a lot of pickleball courts in the golf communities. Oh, I see. So you okay. can either go play golf or you go pickleball. Man. Well, that's awesome. I, and no rugby like there, you don't like, in the... <laughs> <laughs> I, th that would be awesome to we, see. I, like we got, we got a injured. bunch of, we, we got, we got a lot of like, uh, retired folks playing rugby. That, that would be impressive. Yeah, but like the that the the risk to reward ratio is just probably not there. Like even for me, I'm like I would love to go play rugby, but at the same time, like an injury from that is probably highly likely, and it's not really worth it. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, but if anyone's on a, a retired rugby league, let us know. I'd be um, impressed. That we just we want to watch awesome. that because um, I've seen old man strength. Yes, um, our dad's a beast. And he's 70, almost, he's turned 71 in a, in what, three days. Yeah. That's awesome. So, um, so yeah. yeah, there, there you go. There's a lot going on, but, but as we age, you know, one of the things you want to look at in your exercise is, okay, what are some of the weight bearings, some of the more high intensity? Um, what are some of the lower intensity, lower impact work you can do? And then you always want to have weight or strength training exercises in there. So, one of the very most important movements, and we talked about this last night, was the squat, because we go through the primal movements. And I think uh, from the research that I've done, and and I'm uh, Dan Sullivan's actually going to be on the show in about a month from now again. He's He's got the plan to live to be 156. And uh, one of the things we're going to be diving deep into is the mechanics of the squat that he's been doing squats every day but he's grown his quads by like two inches and it's caused an increase in his testosterone and he's 76. And so um, if you don't think you can put on muscle mass at that age, um, he's living proof that you can, but squats, I would say are one of the most important movements because in the primal movement, you can squat. And if you think primal, it just means like, how are our bodies designed to move? And you can squat, you can hinge. So Kate, do you want to show a hinge movement a hinge is like a kettlebell swing right yeah. like picking stuff up yep the hinge yeah. and then you got your push so pushing and then you got your pulling movements or push up and pull up um and then you've got your walk so your gait then you've got a lunge and then we can rotate so all those cool movements if you do these primal movements every day um you're going to help activate all the muscles in your body and the, the muscle groups in your body are the most uh, needy group for insulin sensitivity. So if you have good, solid muscles, your blood sugar will stay stable. And as we know, if, if you make it to the age of 80, which I believe everyone in this community will, um, you know, barring any kind of crazy natural, you know, you know kind of calamity, but, um, but, but the thing you have to worry about the most is Alzheimer's disease. And so um, just by increasing your muscle mass, you're going to improve your brain health and improve every single metric in your body. So, 
So some of these primal movements are going to be key. And then you want to look at, you know, maybe doing sprints. Uh, do you remember that study that Dr. Eckel shared at Go Wellness on sprints, Cade, and brain no. neurotropic factors? I know you're usually working, you know, with the clients and coaching, but, um, but Dr. Eckel, he uh, shared a study where he found that the highest um, uh, release of brain derived nootropic factors, which are the protective proteins for your brain. um, The way to get the highest amount of those is through sprints and sprints work more muscle groups in the body than any other exercise you can do. Because, I mean, you think about it and I, you know, kid running track, you probably remember, you know, even having chest soreness when you're running those, those, uh, those curves. Um, Yeah, it's crazy. So uh, sprints could be uh, something great. Um, Lifting heavy things and then move frequently at a slow pace. So make sure you got those three things in and and that's like a really good uh, formula for just keeping your body super healthy in your exercise. Um, thoughts on that, Kate? Love that. No, I love that. And I think, um, you know, sometimes it's, uh, you know, you hear this and I think we all know, and everyone knows like exercise is, is good for our health. Um, it's just really like taking that initiative and that one simple step to, you know, do some kind of movement. So even if you're in, you know, different pains, different, uh, different things going on is just getting movement. Like even if you're, you know, bedridden, finding ways to, you know, get different, different, um, joints and in different areas of your body to move, use your lungs, use breath. Um, I think those things are so, so critical because, you know, just like what Reagan said at the beginning is, is you make, you know, one, these little teeny changes that are moving you in the right direction. Um, eventually you hit that, that curve where, um, you can really start uh, moving. And I think, um, you know, even, you know, some of the stuff with, uh, you know, COVID and these, these sicknesses, um, I, I, I cringe when I hear people, you know, they just go and they, they lay in bed all day um, because that, that oxygen and that movement, that's what, like, you got to get your lungs moving. And that's actually the most critical thing. Um, If, if you get a a respiratory illness or or anything like that, you gotta, you gotta breathe it out. Um, That that's, that's uh, critical. So no, I think um, so important to, to look at and, and realize and then plan around it. Um, cause I think that's, that's why we, uh, uh, why most of us don't exercise is we, we don't like just put a stake in the ground and say, okay, this is, this is my time. This is like for my health, for my person, for myself, it's sacred. No one else is going to touch this. And this is, this is the exact time when I go, um, whether that's in the morning, afternoon, like you can do it any time, just uh, create a create a construct where that's foundational. Yeah, and and Kate, to your point on the immune system, um, the Lancet published a study in 2018, and um, here's what they found. I mean, for immune benefits, they found that regular moderate exercise decreases the inflammatory response, so you increase immune regulation. Exercise flushes out pathogens in your airways. So if you think about, especially if you're breathing through your nose as much as you can when you exercise, that's where a lot of the infections uh, tend to replicate. That's why with COVID, you're getting the nasal swab. Um, Because once you flush out those pathogens, um, then you get the antibodies and white, white blood cells that circulate more rapidly in your vascular system. Pretty interesting, right? Yeah, Um, that makes sense. Exercise reduces cortisol. And then that increase in body temperature is like inducing a fever. So we have fevers because then we have phagocytosis that can happen where those pathogens get eaten up. That's what a a fever does is it kind of renders some of the the pathogens weak so that our body can recognize it, clear them out, and we can move on. So, so yeah, some very uh, powerful, just, you know, uh, you talking about immune system. I think those are some great things. Um, Yeah. 
Uh, Diane uh, had a comment here. Always loved to work out. Uh, she so you taught step and high impact aerobic classes for twenty years. That's awesome. Nice. You were taking nine classes a week um, at the health club before the virus. Uh, then wow. the virus shut everything down, and I got lazy. Mm-hmm. Only taking five classes now. Hey, that's still impressive. Five <laughs> classes now because that is what the club offers. Um, this past month has got me going at it again due to the hat classes. Oh, yay. Thanks for sharing that, Diane. Glad, you, Diane. glad it's got you back at it. Yeah, that's awesome. Good. And Diane, you may remember some of the, the, uh, workouts. So Tabata, you know, 20 seconds on 10 seconds, rest 20 seconds on 10 seconds, rest. Um, that's a great workout you can do. You can do a lot in eight minutes with a Tabata. And Kada, you've done Tabatas in the first like two minutes, you're like, I got this. And then by oh, minute yeah. three, you're like, <laughs> oh, shoot, by minute four. And then you do another cycle and it really starts hurting. By minute eight, you just feel like you've worked out for an hour. So um, I, I love Tabatas. It is a it's like a mind game because yeah, to your point at the beginning, you're like, oh, this is so easy. Like, why don't I just keep going? Why am I resting right now? And then. <laughs> Like how, at the end, you're like, oh man, I don't know if I can do 20 seconds of this. <laughs> 20 seconds feels like 20 minutes. Yes. <laughs> um, so two books uh, that I would recommend everyone read, um, Body by Science. That's where you go really slow and lifting so you don't injure yourself. And that cadence is challenging. Um, yeah. But a great workout by Dr. Doug McGuff. Um, he did most of his research at Logan. I don't know if you knew that, Cade, but. I do try to cherry not. pick um, our Utah scientists and promote their work because I, I love Utah. So sorry, Diane, I know you're from Montana, but um, <laughs> I love I love Montanans too. But um, I like to see the research that comes locally here. So, and and then I then I know that people are good people too. Um, uh, Younger Next Year is another great book um, written about 20 years ago, but it shows you how to turn back your biological clock. So these are. These are some great things. Um, so uh, peptides, if you are exercising and you have not been exercising and you're, you get the DOMS, uh, the delayed onset muscle soreness that where you don't want to work out the next day, Cade, what's the ma- magical peptide so you have no muscle soreness that makes you feel like you didn't even work out the day before? Oh, I thymus and beta four there you go. is amazing for that. Love thymus and beta four. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? I mean, uh, uh, cause there's nothing worse than, you know, you do a hard workout the day before and then you wake up the next day and you're sore. And then the next day you're even more sore and you're like, Oh, um, but thymus and beta four has been a game changer, um, in the recovery. And so what the studies show is that it's the first gene to be upregulated after an injury. And so if you think about what you're doing with exercise and especially weightlifting is you're breaking down muscle. So it's really weird because exercise, you're actually breaking down your body and then it's the recovery and the repair process that allows your body to rebuild something even better. And if you don't put a little stress on your body, then your body will just break down itself on its own. And so what thymus and beta four helps you do is repair the damage uh, long before your body could do it on its own. Cause it's already there. You're just assisting the body's natural abilities to heal. So it's not like you're using a hormone like growth hormone to improve your healing time. All you're doing is cleaning up that genetic pathway so that your body knows how to heal faster. It just turns on that signal. Hey, Cade needs to repair and zzz, it gets done. Cool, cool peptide. It. It's so cool. So yeah, I, I, you can. It almost it's it's kind it's like a um, a, a trick trick pony uh, <laughs> peptide. Just because like you you have this like killer workout and you expect to just be so sore and beat up the next day. You wake up and it's like, did I even work out? Like <laughs> I, I don't feel right. it. Yeah. And it's really good for the brain, um, the thymus and beta four. For, and then it's also really good for your, your immune system. Um, so this is a great one. And then the other peptide that you can use if, if you're like Diane and you say, man, I want to get some additional benefits from exercise, but I can't do it as much as I like. Well, that's where the mitochondrial derived peptide called MADA-C is really powerful because what the studies show is that 
it helps mediate the, um, the insulin resistance and insulin sensitivity in the skeletal muscle. And it also leads to AMPK activation, which is a fancy way of saying it. Mata C helps you get the benefits of exercise right in the mitochondria, even if you have not exercised. And so that's, that's pretty interesting. Nice, so that, nice little hack. It's Maybe, a big hack. Yeah. Yeah. Um, had a couple other comments I'll uh, go through. Um, oh, and this is back on our, our conversation about kind of COVID and, and uh, getting uh, exercise, but also just fresh air, sunshine, along with exercise helps build up immunity to fight it. I, I 100% agree. Um, had to time my morning mountain sprint workout around your health health uh morning sessions it was cold oh. <laughs> glad you're here bev yes i love bev's um dedication bev has just like transformed her health so i think we all need to give bev a big hand she's just yeah. done so well yeah so great um and then we had oh joy when when are we getting a, a chiropractor in saint george um <laughs> it's it's in the works but um, we don't have our candidate at this point. Um, but Jeff, Jeff, our physical therapist, Dr. Gell is amazing. so hands-on, like he does a lot of the same stuff. Uh, yeah. you know, so work with Let's, Jeff, you'll be shocked. Yeah. See, see Jeff. Um, if you haven't, um, he's our, our physical therapist down here and, um, he, he is amazing. Um, and then how do you spell it? It's thymosin, T H Y M S. S I N. Yep. I think I missed an O in there. Thymosin. Yeah. Yep. Beta four. Beta four. Yep. And if anyone needs um needs help getting that, just call one of the offices. Um we have the thymosin beta four frag now that's uh, just oral. Um, but I like the injectable a little better. But the frags work yeah. great. It's less expensive. Um it's over the counter, so it's not a prescription. Um, and then Marty asked, where can I get these peptides? Um, the, the easiest way to do it, um, give, a, give our office a call. Um, this is, uh, and we'll, we'll, we need to do an announcement about the name change. I think people have started yeah. seeing things. We sent out an email. Um, and so we'll, we'll talk really briefly about that. But uh, call, it's Anodyne Pain and Wellness. Um, if you call us at the 801-872-8699, it'll route you to whatever location is going to be best for you. And uh, yeah, we can schedule a consultation and, and see what peptides would be right for you. Um, because we do do want to make sure we're not um, we're, we're getting you the, the right things for your goals and what you're currently um, doing for your health. Yeah. Do not get these on Amazon or over the counter because they are for research use only and they have some really weird preservatives and they may be dangerous. So just as a caveat, and you've got to make sure you seek medical advice on these. We're just giving you some research here. Yeah. Awesome. So, um, yes. Yeah, so, Cade, we had a big announcement that was uh, was made. We sent out an email and we have now fully transitioned from East West Health, which is is the baby that I hatched in 2004. And now we are officially Anodyne Pain and Wellness. Yeah. Yeah. So we um, join, we have a network of, what, about 15, 15 different offices nationwide, soon to be about um, 50. About 40. 40 or 50. Yeah, actually with licenses, um, we've got, we'll be at 50 by, we'll be over 50 by the end of the year. So um, really exciting to be part of a nationwide network. Um, so we're super excited about that. Yeah, it's, it's uh, really, really cool. I think still Diane closest one to Montana is going to be Utah. Salt Lake. Uh, yeah. So that's Salt Lake. We'll get uh, up there. I love uh, that area, but we, uh, yeah, we looked at, you know, we're, we're, our goal is to make collaborative medicine and what we do is, is this is mainstream. And so this is a, a way that we can do that. So we, we uh, are, are now working with, uh, in, in partnership with uh, Anodyne Pain and Wellness. So we're really excited about it. Um, it's, uh, they've added some, some different capabilities for us. 
and uh, we've we've uh, done done the same for some of the other offices, and so yeah, um, yeah, we're it's uh, it's exciting. Yeah, and we will be uh, having our new cl- newest uh, merge uh, with uh, Integrated Wellness in South Jordan as well. And so um, be on the lookout for that. There's just a really exciting things going on here. And we couldn't have done uh, any of this and any of these collaborative partnerships without you guys being uh, just such incredible uh, members of our community. So I uh, can't thank you enough. And I really want to thank you guys for sending your friends and family. And I mean, every day I see, you know, people come in just full of, of hope again and, and light and and you know, seeing them make that transformation is is a joy of my life. But but I couldn't have done that without you sharing with them what your experience has been at uh, at our clinics at now Anodyne or East West. So so thanks you guys over the years. It's been a really fun process. So um, can't thank you enough. And that's not an April Fool's joke. This is actually real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everyone's we, like we are, waiting for the punchline. Are literally, we have changed our name, but <laughs> yes. Yeah. Go ahead, Cade. Uh, Diane asked, uh, the hack classes are free for anyone to watch. So um, yes, yes. So we have... Uh, if, um, if they come from you, Diane, but... Yeah, they, so if, if it's a referral. Fee. So there is the... It's typically there's... Uh, there's um, it's a five hundred dollar course that um, people can can purchase. If they're referred um, straight from from you, uh, a patient, um, yes, yeah, send, send them our way. Um, we we want to figure out how we can provide the best education content, um, all, all of those things to uh, to the to our communities, to the world, really. And so, yes, please please share uh, share and. and um, yeah, we, we love, uh, helping anyone. And I think, you know, yeah. hopefully you're seeing it on the, on the, on the hacks and also this podcast is, you know, it's not, um, you, you know, we, we work with people that are currently suffering with ca- chronic disease or chronic pain. Um, but also, you know, if you're really healthy and just looking to, to get your health to the next level, um, you know, the, we, I, I, I believe we we uh, really love working with all those different spectrums. So, um, cool. awesome. Um, oh, so, sorry, my mic is. Uh... <laughs> so, uh, just to kind of finish up on the the movement therapy uh, week three, we talked about. So, the challenge, one of the challenges on week two is get your exercise gear set out. And, um, so no more bathrobes in the morning when you wake up, just get in your exercise gear and go. If you don't have a pattern, if you like to exercise in the afternoon, we'll at least set out your clothes in the morning. So you have your little scarecrow. Um, but that's, that's going to be the trigger that helps you maintain the habit. And Anne gave me that idea. Um, so thanks, Anne. Um, and, and so week three was nutritional shortcuts uh, to remove induced to remove movement induced inflammation. So this was all on electrolytes. And Kate, I think this was probably one of the most talked about of all of the, the hacks that we did last month. It was the hydration. And yeah. because people are like, oh, wow, I'm just looking at all the sugar that's in my electrolytes. And I, I didn't realize how much better I feel when I actually do these electrolytes. And so the challenge was to get some electrolytes or even putting sea salt and lemon and drink a glass of water every morning. And then an hour before bed at night, you drink your final glass of water. So you're not waking up to urinate at night and disrupting your beautiful sleep. And then you, but you add electrolytes to your water so that you're actually hydrated. Um, And uh, did, have you been doing more electrolytes still kid? I know you increased yours since the hack. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely have. And no, it's great. Especially in the mornings. Um, I was kind of hit and miss. Yep. Um, after a workout, um, adding in the electrolytes is, uh, super critical. Um, especially like, yeah, you know, I, I like to have a, a morning cup of coffee and that was one thing, um, from the hacks, uh, coffee, you know, it's obviously a, a diuretic. And so getting, uh, some electrolytes along with that's really important because otherwise, uh, you're going to be dehydrated. Yes. 
and uh, you know the caffeine it will deplete magnesium. So make sure you you know you put magnesium back into your into your your life, um, your body. So so we talked about getting hydrated, and then we talked about foods that cause inflammation, like gluten, some of the dairies, um, some of those industrial plant oils like the uh, cottonseed oil, canola oil, um, corn can, can cause it, any fried foods, syrups, sodas, uh, biscuits, crackers, all the processed foods and fast foods um, are going to cause inflammation. And then foods that reduce inflammation, we talked about like the, your, your avocados, your olive oil, your tart cherries, onions and garlic, uh, making sure you're getting super healthy meats. And then an abundant source, like one to two pounds of leafy green vegetables every day. And then um, eating the smaller fish, you know, the salmon has uh, less amounts of, uh, you know, toxicity and and mercury in it. Uh, But getting some wild caught salmon, some sardines and mackerel, those are great ways to get your fatty acids. And then, um, you know, we talked about collagen, and even shared some studies on uh, how collagen actually helped repair uh, damaged uh, joints in athletes uh, who used it over the athletes who didn't. So if you want to recover faster, not only do you need thymosin beta-4, but also add some collagen in your in your diet and, and then add in some vitamin C because vitamin C is the activator for collagen. And then you know, turmeric and ginger are some of our favorite anti-inflammatories. So, so the challenge for number three was simply, you know, get collagen, add hydration, but get some forest bathing done. Um, go for a walk out in the trees after dinner every night. Go for a walk. So, all awesome. right, love it. it. We had a couple of questions um, come in, so I'm going to interrupt you real quick, Ray. Oh yeah, please. Um, and Cheryl, you might need to um, clarify your question. What testers do you recommend for the water we drink? Um, are we, you talking like alkaline strips or, Oh, to see the toxicity in your water. Um, because, uh, Cheryl, you can go to ewg.org environmental working group.org plug in your zip code and they've got all the testing on your water supply right there. Nice. Um, and then Diane asked about a uh, wild cod not, is wild cod. Yeah. Um, not that great. Or is the question wild cot? Wild, yeah, wild cod, cod. cod. Yeah, wild cod cod is one of my yeah. favorite buttery white fish. I love it. Love, mm. love it. Yes. <laughs> All right. So um, just to kind of finish up uh, week four, what we did, you know, last week was we talked about leveling up. And we can do, we could obviously do a whole podcast on each one of these series. We could probably do two podcasts on every hack and dive deep. But last week was leveling up. So how fit are you? And we talked about doing a VO2 max. And next month, our our, uh, challenge, our hack's going to be around cardiovascular. It's a cardiovascular and brain reset. So we're going to be diving deeper into the VO2 max. But I shared with you some ways where you can do you know, check your heart rate for 20 seconds and you can see where you line up. But if you go to shapesense.com, uh, they have these VO2 max calculators and a bunch of cool tests there. Um, we talked about increasing your strength with push-ups, what the averages are, where you are, and then improving your push-up, uh, you know, maximum amount of push-ups before you have to stop. Um, we talked about squats. How many squats can you do before stopping? Um, maximum number. And then we did the balance. The balance is hard. The closed eyes balance is very tricky, but such an important part of your overall fitness uh, using vitamin D. And then we talked about planks and holding your planks. So um, we saw a lot of people in, you know, getting engaged there and, and getting that done. And, and then finally last night, um, what we finished up with is, is just, Hey, pick an event that is going to push you beyond where you are now in your life. And, you know, that could be like the 5k that we talked about in the beginning of this or yoga or what Kate and I are doing with our boys is Spartan race. Um, you know, whatever, whatever you, you, uh, feel like would be really beneficial, um, and something you've always wanted to do, but you've never had the courage. Well, now is the time. So, 
Um, so that is how we, we finished off this uh, amazing five week uh, movement freedom course. And I, I think, uh, you know, it couldn't have, uh, couldn't have gone any better. I mean, all of the participation has been amazing. And now just seeing people get a little more conscientious around their fitness has been um, an immediate payoff. And Kate, what do you think this will do in the next three years if people keep these habits in their life? Oh, man. In three years, I think you will see, um, you, you'll be like a whole new person in, in three years, um, even in one year. So your, your cellular levels um, recycle, you know, it's, it's about a, a year process to get all new cells from today, from a year to now. Yeah. Um, and so that's where if you're making real change throughout that process, um, yeah, you're, you're going to be sleeping better. You're going to be more active, more fit. Um, your energy levels will be up. Um, yeah, it, it's, uh, it's, a, it's just an amazing process. So exciting for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. So congratulations, everyone. Uh, we really appreciate you guys. Um, and we'll be back next week, same time, same place. If you need a golden ticket or you'd like to give a golden ticket for our hacks, to one of your friends or family, someone you care about, all you need to do is reach out to Ann and, uh, or call the office and we will get uh, your, a golden ticket to uh, your friends, your family, so that they can be part of this uh, beautiful community. Yes. And for those of you that are just listening and um, we posted the, uh, the e- Ann's email in the chat box, but I'll just read that to you because I know we do have some just strict listeners um, it's an a n n e dot marked m a r k t at goelness dot com. So, um, email Anne and she can get you uh, set up with our um, with our health accelerator courses. Love you guys. We'll see you next week. Same time, same place. Have a great one. See you, Reagan. Bye-bye.